Panasonic DMC FZ2000 2500. Is it a point and shoot camera? Let's talk a little bit about it. Hello everybody, my name is Attila Mate from Blue Sky Photography and today I'd like to talk to you about the Panasonic DMC FZ2000 2500. This is um, a point and shoot camera, well it's a bridge camera and uh, let's talk a little bit about if, uh, if it is good for professional work or not. So in the last few months I had a very big question in my head you know and I wanted to get into micro four thirds world and I wanted to get a uh, a mirrorless camera because as you all know I, I uh, sold my Sony gear completely so I I used to have the Sony A7R and the Sony A7 Mark II and the Sony A6000. Now at the moment I don't have any Sony cameras so I don't uh, I don't own any mirrorless cameras only Nikon and I would like to get because I like very much the the live view you know and I like very much the the let's say the lightweight of the mirrorless and uh, a lot of advantages you know which comes with mirrorless <clears throat> so I was thinking a lot you know on which one should I buy you know and uh, in this video I would like to speak a little bit about the um, Panasonic DMC FZ2000 because I think that in my opinion this is a killer camera so uh, let's see a little bit uh, and oh yeah and again I would like to mention this at the beginning that this is not a review the review will come later on because I uh, I'm planning to go down to Panasonic uh, store you know in uh, in Limerick and to get my hands on the camera and to uh, to test it out so they promised me that they will give me the camera to test it out so I that this that video will will follow you know and uh, uh, probably I will purchase this camera but after all I would like to speak a little bit about my opinion about this camera now first of all this is a bridge camera this is a, a mirrorless camera but it's a bridge camera and uh, the price is pretty good for the for the for the deal for the package what you get for that price it is very very good so the price is 1350 euro here in in Ireland uh, the rest of the euro probably it will be about 1250 something like that Ireland is always expensive than the rest of Europe I don't know why and in uh, US it's 1999 dollar if I'm not wrong roughly it's around like that so in my opinion and nobody really talks about uh, this this little camera you know on, on YouTube and in my opinion this is a professional camcorder in a DSLR style body I mean what you what you get you know in uh, in this camcorder you know for that money it is amazing I tell you and uh, it's it's like a professional camcorder There's many many professional camcorders you know like five six seven thousand euro cam camcorders they don't have or or, or they will have these kind of uh, uh, specs you know what this camera can um, can actually realize so let's see a little bit um, what is this uh, mostly if you are in video and uh, less in photography or or you want a, a video camera and uh, which one takes also decent uh, stills then this camera is for you definitely if you are mostly in photography then I wouldn't suggest to uh, to look about this camera because this camera has a one inch sensor and uh, for photography for this money you can buy a camera which is uh, image quality is much better than than this one so one inch sensor and uh, like I t like I said uh, it's a uh, it's a killer video performance and it's uh, the crop factor is 2.7 times so this is uh, this is pretty bad you know when you want to uh, when you want to use wide angle lenses so it's not really advantages uh, but on the same time you get some advantage as well because uh, if you want long reach you know if you want a longer zoom you know like a zoom range then the crop factor will work for you so this is uh, just uh, just an information to, uh, so you know that the crop factor is 2.7 times uh, this is um, a zoom range is 
from 24 to 480 millimeter and this is a Leica branded lens it's variable aperture but uh, it's not so bad because it's from 2.8 to 4.5 now uh, let's talk just a little bit about this uh, from 2.8 to 4.5 is why do I say it's not so bad because from 24 millimeter to 480 so usually what you will use like if you purchase this camera for everyday use uh, from this 24 to 480 you will use mostly from 24 to let's say 200 millimeter and if you are a wildlife or, or a sports photographer or something like this then obviously you will go further down or if you want to shoot some video about wildlife or these kind of things you will go further out you know in the zoom range but mostly and i say mostly uh, the range you will use is about from 24 to 200 millimeter now if on the lower side on the wide side is 2.8 it means that roughly at uh, 200 millimeter it will be about maximum 3.5 something like that and that is pretty good I mean the most of the kit lenses what you can buy on the most of the the kit lenses what you can buy on the cameras with the camera sorry uh, they will have 3.5 to 5.6 so they start at 3.5 and uh, if you if you just want you know you can set this uh, this aperture at 4 at f4 and you will have an f4 constant aperture lens let's say from 24 millimeter until uh, 300 millimeter I just say like that but I will test this out when I put my hand on the camera and I will uh, I will um, say it in the in the next video I will talk about this now because it's a one inch sensor the low light capability or low light performance is probably not the best and uh, it's uh, it's <laughs> I don't even want to compare to a full frame camera because that's obviously it's not the case you know this is this is not uh, <laughs> It won't stand you know so it's it's no nonsense to compare it now five axis image stabilization in body image stabilization it is in it and uh, as we all know Panasonic's image stabilization is pretty good I mean uh, they had some issues with the G80 recently but that's nothing serious and uh, they will they uh, arranged immediately they made they released the firmware update and everything was fine so uh, they have pretty good image stabilization now all, uh, the camera contains all those uh, photo modes you know like Panasonic has this Lumix style photo modes like the focus stacking post focus 4k photo mode you know all these are good and I would say uh, they are helpful as well but there is a, a disadvantage in it and again you know many people they don't really talk about this that this uh, focus stacking post focus 4k photo mode you know they don't really work only at 8 megapixel jpegs you know so hmm, i don't know 8 megapixel i'm not sure if it's a jpeg or not but 8 megapixel definitely i think it's in jpeg yeah i have to check that out again but it is helpful and it's in the camera but i think that if you want to purchase this camera and uh, uh, i'm absolutely sure that then you are not interested more in photography you know you will be interested more in video because that's where the strong point of this camera is the focus uh, the autofocus of this camera is pretty good because it has the Panasonic's DFD technology and um, as we all know point to point focusing the Panasonic DFD technology it is excellent I mean fast lightning fast autofocus from point to point in mirrorless world probably is one of the best so that's not a question decent continuous autofocus with face and eye detection that's really good in video not as good I would not say that it is as good as Sony's face and eye detection but in continuous I'm talking about continuous autofocus in video but it is decent it is very good I would say that it's a uh, it's a good autofocus you know you won't really uh, complain about that definitely now here's something which uh, which is again very very helpful in video and that is built-in ND filter two four six stops and auto mode now this is very very good because sometimes you find yourself in a situation where you would like to have an ND filter but you have to put that 
on your lens, you know, and you have to mess around, you know, you have to purchase it separately. And let's not talk about that. A good ND filter, if you want, it is very expensive. It can be like 200, 250 euro. I mean, this is included in the camera and this is a great step. I tell you, this is a great, great step. Excellent job, Panasonic. Now, great button layout with tons of customizable buttons. Again, Panasonic is famous about the, the customization, you know, of the camera is excellent. I mean, you can customize almost everything on that camera, honestly. And uh, this camera has a lot of buttons, which one you can just customize however you like. And again, it has three buttons on the lens on the side, you know, and you can customize that for video work, you know, or even for photography. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the video features because this is the strong point of, of this camera. I can say that <laughs> everything you wish from a video camera, it's in this camera with some compromises. And the first and the biggest compromise is that it's a one inch sensor. Now, I know that it's a built in lens and I know that it's pretty difficult, you know, to, uh, uh, to get a bigger sensor with a built-in lens because the, the obviously the, the sensor is bigger the lenses has to be bigger and then the, the built-in lens will be like you know bulky like that you know so it's pretty pretty difficult to um, to get in uh, high, a bigger sensor you know but this is one of the biggest disadvantage of this camera one of the biggest uh, let's say uh, compromise you know the second compromise is that it's a variable aperture it's not bad, like I told you at the beginning, it's 2.8 to 4.5, it's not bad, it's still good, but it's variable, you know, and luckily here we have the NV filter, and uh, you can uh, you can adjust from the NV filter, you know, you can put auto on the NV filter, and then it will adjust automatically itself, you know, so you won't really feel the, the when you zoom in, you know, and the, the aperture will close down, you, you don't really feel that. Now, let's go a little bit further down and let's talk about the next great feature of this camera and that is the slow motion capability. Again, like I told you, this camera is mostly for video. Well, the strong point, you know, of this camera, it is for video. And uh, I was looking on, um, on um, the Camera Store TV channel, you know, and they, they uh, released a video about the best camera of 2016. And they, uh, they said that the uh, Panasonic FZ2000 or 2500 is the best video camera of the year because of the features what you get for the price point. And I, I agree with them. And I have to say that that is actually true because only, like I said, only professional cameras have all these features, you know, and like slow motion is again up to 120 frames per second, you know, uh, usable, let's say, until 90, 90, 96 frames per second, you know, because if you go until 120, it will be soft, you know, a little bit. But still, it's a slow motion capability, which is very handy sometimes when you need it. Again, 4K recording in cinematic 4K mode. Now, cinematic 4K is great. It's not uh, necessary on a 4K camera, but it is great. And uh, I would say that it's handy enough, you know, to have it. So up to 200 megabits per second, full high HD recording. Now this is, this is again something what, I mean, that's, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a huge file. Like, you know, it's a huge bitrate, you know, it's 200 megabits per second. Though. That's, uh, that's great. So I can't say anything else. Just that's very, very good, you know. And again, something very good, which only expensive cameras have, clean HDMI output 4.2.2 8-bit and 4.2.2 10-bit. If, if you want to record with external recorder. Now, it's, um, it's just unbelievably good, this is. I mean, <laughs> this, I, I don't even want to believe that the, Panasonic just put this in, in, in this camera, you know, it's just, it's excellent, you know. And uh, let's not talk about that, the 4.2.2 10-bit rate is recorded 
in 4K and downscale to 1080p in the camera. And that is for the excellent sharpness what you can get. That's the, the best sharpness what you can get, you know, for the moment from a video camera. Now, like I told you at the beginning, you know, it's only professional cameras, professional video cameras have these kind of features. And uh, again, we talk about here the Cinelike D and Cinelike V profiles, you know, and, uh, and uh, for the high dynamic range, when you, when you shoot something with high dynamic range, you know, you can do, use these profiles, you know, to, uh, uh, to get more details. And optional, you have to pay separate for this, but optionally you can buy the Vlog L profile for extra 100 euro, 100, 120 euro, something like that. And uh, that is a very flat profile, you know, with a lot of uh, uh, a large dynamic range, you know, and you can get a lot of details out of it. Now, again, microphone and, microphone and headphone input on the camera. So, it's, it's, only, <laughs> it's only a fraction of the features what this camera can produce and what, 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 what are the specs of this camera. I mean, it's just an excellent, excellent camera. And like I said, this is my preview of it and I, I'm thinking to buy this camera. So I try my best to get down um, to Limerick as soon as possible, you know, in, uh, in the Panasonic store, because unfortunately I live in Waterford and uh, there is no camera store in Waterford. So I have to go all the time, you know, I have to travel to Dublin or to Limerick or to Cork, you know, to get my hands on the cameras and to test them out. But I will go down um, uh, maybe next week or the week after I will go down to, uh, to Limerick and I will try these cameras and uh, I will give an update. I will make an update video when I have when I have tested actually the camera, but how it looks from the specs, you know, this camera is just this is just very, very good if you are mainly in video and not about photography. If you want for photography, like I said, you have many other options with the same amount of money, which are bigger sensors, great image quality, better image quality than this one. But I will compare that as well. I will compare definitely. I will compare with APS-C size sensors. I will compare with, uh, with um, uh, micro four-third sensors. So stay tuned if you want to uh, see that and subscribe to my channel if you uh, didn't until now so you don't miss those videos. Now, I don't really want to pull longer than that. And I would say, uh, if you are interested in a video, mainly video camera, video centric camera, then this is the one, which one you should buy, I would say, because this is a professional camcorder in DSLR style body and period. That's inarguable. I mean, these kind of specifications you don't really get in a, in a camera with this price range. So I hope you like this video. I hope that uh, it, it will be helpful for somebody. And if you like it, please like and subscribe and uh, share my videos. And other than that, I wish you a nice day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. With cribs and secrets and forbidden bliss Can't stay still, don't stop the thrill My bones crave your skin Suffocating, I'm waiting and always hesitating.